Tonight's screening is a co-presentation with um, Haiti Action Montreal. It is uh, part of a series of events uh, they're organizing in the context of the 10-year anniversary of the coup in Haiti. Um, and I'd like to invite Nick Barry Shaw to talk about Haiti Action Montreal and the rest of the events um, taking place this week. Thanks, Svetla. Um, I'd like to thank Ezra and uh, the rest of the volunteers at Cinema Politica for uh, helping put this together and for always having such a good lineup of films. Uh, I'd like to thank Joseph and Vox for, uh, for being here as well to participate in the discussion. Um, I'd just like to say a few words about Haiti Action Montreal and uh, precisely uh, where this group comes from and why we're, we decided to show this film in the context of the 10th anniversary of the coup in Haiti. Uh, for, the, for those of you that don't know, uh, on February 29th, 2004, Haiti's democratically elected government was overthrown in a violent coup supported uh, and really enacted by Canada in collaboration with the U.S. and France. Uh, Haiti Action Montreal was kind of formed in the context of the response to that uh, as a large number of people um, across Canada started coming, uh, starting to realize just how deeply involved Canada was in the coup. Uh, just a few quick examples. Um, uh, when the Democrat, when uh, Jean-Bertrand Aristide and his party, Famille Lavalas, were elected in, in 2000, uh, Canada, in lockstep with the United States, cut off all international aid to Haiti. And Haiti, having an economy that is so uh, dependent on foreign aid, this basically threw the economy into a crisis. In in, at the same moment, Canada redirected its aid to the political opposition to Aristide, uh, fomenting a, a political crisis. At the same time, uh, it, then in 2003, uh, Canada hosted uh, a meeting ca called the Ottawa Initiative. The Ottawa Initiative uh, was a meeting held to decide what, where Haiti's future was going to go. Uh, there were no Haitians invited to this meeting. It was Canada, the US, France, and a few other Latin American diplomats who sat around deciding how Haiti was going to go over the next 10 years. Uh, and they decided a few things. They decided, one, uh, Haiti needed to be put under tutelage by the United Nations. Two, Aristide had to go. Uh, and three, the military should be brought back. All of these things have come to pass since then. On February 29th, 2004, uh, U.S. Marines uh, were there to whisk Aristide onto a State Department plane and dump him unceremoniously in the Central African Republic. Uh, it was Canadian troops that were on the runway, securing it for the Americans as they were taking the democratically elected president out of the country. Um, after the coup, there was basically two years of unrelenting bloodshed, uh, repression directed by the interim government, appointed by Canada and the United States, against the poor neighborhoods. Overwhelmingly, it was targeted against the poor neighborhoods where Aristide and the Lavalas movement had the greatest amount of support. Uh, and so our group was formed in, in response to this, understanding how Canada was training the, the, the Haitian National Police to, uh, to carry out this repression, how Canada had appointed the Deputy Justice of Minister, which was responsible for thousands of political prisoners who were being held in Haiti at the time, um, and how, how Canada was supporting diplomatically and economically this illegitimate government that had been installed by a coup d'etat. So I think one of the things we started running into in the case of Haiti was that, on the one hand, people have this very positive image of Canada's action abroad. And so it kind of people have a hard time believing that Canada could be involved in such a thing. Uh, because we think of ourselves as the good guy. But, you know, even though this film doesn't touch on Canada, doesn't touch on the political history of the coup itself, I think it has an important deeper political message because it, it touches on another side of uh, the problem that we were fighting against when we were trying to mobilize people against the coup. One of the things that we found was that there's this dominant image of Haiti as basically a country that is defined by its poverty. Uh, it's a country that doesn't really have any history, that doesn't have any culture, it's just a bunch of people who are dirt poor, who are desperately uh, you know, surviving and suffering, and a few people at the top who change every few years uh, who are exploiting them and oppressing them. Haiti doesn't have any history, it doesn't have any culture. And this is the kind of dominant uh, image that we get through the media uh, and through our culture. And it's an it's a image that is common to the third world, but I think is stuck particularly on Haiti. Uh, you know, Because every news article you see about Haiti, you never see it without the Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Kind of like one word, all caps lock, you know, 
describing Haiti as if like we have to be reminded of that constantly. And so I think Joseph's film is really great for just pulling back for a moment from you know, the real suffering that's going on and the real political struggles that are going on. And just looking at Haiti as another country with its own culture, a very rich culture, and its history, and an incredibly rich, incredibly important history. And so I'm glad that we're showing this film in the context of Black History Month, um, especially here in Montreal and in Quebec. Uh, I think Haitians get a lot of shit from uh, the dominant culture. I'm thinking just off the top of my head, uh, right before the start of Black History Month, Eric Duhaime, uh, you know, one of the lower forms of humanity that exists in the world, was on Radio X uh, talking about how, you know, blacks, they really don't have anything to be proud of. You know, because uh, there are just no important black uh, leaders. And look at, you know, Jean Pascal, this boxer who was involved in some, uh, some story of rape. You know, look, they don't have anything to be proud of. Uh, I think this film is great because it, it, is a, it is a punch in the face to people like Duhaime. Uh, and I think we need more of that. Uh, I would like to see a real punch in the face to Duhaime as well. But, you know, that probably would get people in trouble. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I guess I'll just end by thanking also my comrades in Haiti Action Montreal who have been mobilizing um, around this week of events. Yesterday we had uh, Mario Joseph uh, come, who's a Haitian lawyer, talking about the human rights situation 10 years after the coup. Uh, he spoke yesterday in the Haitian community. He's speaking again on the Thursday at 6 p.m. at Saint Saint Pierre. It's 1212 Panay. And so if you want to come, uh, you may have seen the lovely Haiti Action Montreal volunteers handing out the little flyers. Uh, grab one and, uh, and come down and we can talk more, more at length with Mario about the coup and its consequences for Haiti. Thank you. Right now I'd like to invite um, local performer, educator, and artist extraordinaire Vox Sambu to tell you a few words about the short film that we'll, we'll screen immediately before the feature. Thank you, thank you. Bonsoir tout le monde. How you all doing? I'm good now. We are My name is Voxambu. I'm a artist, uh, rapper from Nomadic Massive. I'm also a youth worker. Um, the next film, the short, is called Democracy in Haiti. In 2010, uh, five of us went to Haiti of the group Nomadic Massive to work with youth in Cafoufeuille in Haiti, and uh, while doing the workshop, one of the things that was coming out, the youth say they were not interested about the election and politics in general. And then we were asking them why, why they not, uh, they don't want to. They feel like the the Haitian government or even the society itself doesn't take what they have in consideration. And this is when the idea came came up to say, why don't we? try to make a documentary about the, the perception of the youth in Haitian politics. And this is why uh, I decided with uh, a friend of mine, Maggie McIlvin from Nomadic Wax, and Lena Jackson, and Mackenzie Jeune, who's uh, in Haiti, and we decided to work on uh, democracy in Haiti. And what you're about, about to see, it's uh, the first episode of Democracy in Haiti. And uh, if you guys have any, any any questions, we're going to be around to answer the questions. And I'd like to invite Monsieur Joseph, the director of IT Toma, to say a few words. Good evening. Uh, thank you for for being here for the my first screening in English of uh, IT Toma. Um, I, I'm, I'm very pleased as well to see the, the movie of uh, Vox because uh, we've we've met we both met uh, Jerry in IT and uh, I thought I would have uh, made that film later but he already <laughs> already d done it. It's a very good good film uh, on a very sympathetic uh, guy. As uh, Nick was mentioning, um, uh, I tried uh, with IT Toma, which is written with uh, with an A in Creole. To, to offer another, another point of view on IT that is not the one with the, we usually understand with an, with an H. IT Toma means uh, the country that is ours. It's our land. Have a good screening. Thank you. Enjoy the film. And uh, Joseph will be here after the film to answer your questions. Thank you.
There are two mics floating around. Please raise your hand. If you have a question, please wait for the mic to get to you and don't scream. Make your question short and sweet. And of course, if you have questions for Haiti Action Montreal, I see Nick is here at the front as well. So um, you're more welcome to ask them. Thank you very much. This was a beautiful film. Here you go. Make some noise again for Jesus, everybody. <laughs> Great film. How long did it take you to make the movie? I, um, I started after the earthquake. After, uh, right after the earthquake, I went uh, to Haiti to, to, to help. I wanted to do something. I went with uh, an organization called uh, Ceci. I never did that before. I'm a filmmaker, but I decided that I would uh, just uh, do something. And I went to in, a, in a camp of 26,000 people distributing uh, food and uh, everything, uh, all kind of distribution. And uh, I then I decided I would, uh, I would do that film. My first subject was a film on, uh, I wanted to, c to criticize the NGOs system because I saw a lot of flaws while I was, work while I was working, lots of things that were not uh, totally inefficient. I perceived the uh, um, the business of aid rather than uh, the humanitarian thing that they were saying. Uh, so I was very uh, bitter and I decided I would do something. And after a while working in that, uh, in that subject, because it was my first subject, I, pers I, did, I, I, s I noticed that I would have, I would have uh, do the same, the same thing again. I would have, uh, I would have, I would present IT with that uh, controversial sound and that noise of uh, something going wrong there, that chaotic. Uh, I would have reproduced that same st uh, thing that you were saying, like uh, it's a place that it doesn't work well. I heard about that place all my life. I spent my, I, mean, I was uh, telling you any, any meeting, family meeting, any birthday, any. <laughs> People, uh, uh, people were discussing those those things, political issues, Duvalier, Aristide. So most of my uh, souvenirs of IT when I was uh, young uh, was uh, noisy. So uh, when I discovered that IT, I decided instead of reproducing that same noise, I should go where talk about the nice things because there's way more nice things than uh, ugly things there. That was my my motivation. Actually, he's not he, he's very noticeable because uh, Yev is a, is, a f is a funny character. Ira Lowenthal is a, is a, is an American. He has an art gallery. Actually, the the Jerry Jerry he was the he had the Jerry start doing a painting as well, okay. and Ira was. Uh, exposing his painting in his gallery, the guy you saw. <laughs> and uh, um, so I rise an anthropologist. is uh, He's been in IT for the last forty years, and uh, um, he was. Uh, I I met him accidentally through Jerry, mm -hmm. and I d I, d uh, I, um, I was uh, I was amazed by the the fact that he had spent so many times and he was so uh, knowledgeable about uh, IT. And uh, he's not. He's, he might be more Asian than lots of Asians. And um, about Sean Penn, when I'm, I'm, I, I, I was, I spent three months in Haiti, and I saw Sean every day. He was working in a camp. He was not in an hotel. He was sleeping in the in the camp. And uh, it, w it was one of the reason I decided that not to do, uh, if not to critic too much NGOs, because a lot of people in NGOs, even if it's a big business, there's a lot of people are doing a very sincere work there and it would not have been very uh, fair to just bash them. During, the, during my, my trip in, uh, in HC, I, uh, I, like I said earlier, I, I just heard bad things about Duvalier and Aristide while I was here. Over there, I just perceived that that guy incarnated a big, 
uh, even though it was right, the, the it's, it's a coup, and they, nobody was uh, legitimate to take that guy out of this country. Uh, he had won, I think he had won uh, his latest election at 90%, way, way more than uh, 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 pardon, Martelly in the last election. But uh, uh, Aristide is uh, uh, that kind of, a lot of people have a, 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 had a lot of hope on him, uh, big hopes. And very soon after his first election, he became a big uh, disillusion. Uh, I understood that a lot of people went depressed after that. Everybody had, had bet on him. It's a... Uh, uh, He's not as uh, he's, he was not a dictator as the other one, the, prior, the, the one before. But the, I never under, I never uh, perceived more deception through one man than this guy. He had this chance. To, he had a, he had a big chance to change a lot of things, and he he just uh, he just uh, he, it, it, it was not in a good context for sure. He, I mean, uh, everybody's against uh, that kind of. Uh, the democ democratic move and uh, more socialistic, but at the same time, he could have been a bit uh, more. Uh, it would have been nice if he would have tried to keep that hope a bit higher than his uh, personal uh, strives. Yeah, in, in our and in, in terms of democracy in Haiti, um, of course, this is the first episode. We do have other episodes that will be coming out that touch upon the coup d'etat. As well, but we make a, we made a conscious choice not to really uh, voice our opinion. Uh, instead of that, we give the youth the opportunity to say what they think, because as often and it's always so easy because we are involved, we have the mic, we're in front of people, we are privileged, and then to come and speak to our behalf. So this is what we're trying to do. So the, the, of course we have different episodes that will be coming out and with their own voice, you will understand mm -hmm. that their own opinion about the, the coup d'etat, about uh, other politicians, other artists that uh, pretending to replace their voices. That's all I, I will say for now. We, 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 sh we shall also remember that in Night C, like I think like a, I think that, um, um, I think that two thirds of Asians are under 21, so the the memory area of these things are is erasable very fast. Because um, uh, voodoo is not only uh, a religion; it's also uh, the culture, uh, the way people live in Haiti. Uh, it's uh, it's the culture, so it it's a, 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 you cannot avoid uh, avoid it. Uh, s even though some people are are saying that they are not uh, voodooists, they they have their they have this in there. They might not practice it, but they cannot be in indifferent to it. It is a rural country. Like there's three million people in the city, you have seven seven million people outside, and most of uh, when you go outside of the city of Port-au-Prince, most of the most of the people are practicing. You saw some events there. Uh, some of them are taking part in the north of the country, uh, Souvenance, because <laughs> he, he's from Lembe, yeah. also in, in the north. Uh, I went. Uh, I've, I've been everywhere, and uh, there was not uh, there was not an occasion. Uh, there was not a place I would I would go, and I would not be uh, uh, encountering some uh, events. Uh, I'm not talking about s on these ceremonies. Ceremonies are yes, there are ceremonies like people here goes in church, but it's not only voodoo is not only in uh, in those ceremonies. It's always in a it's a way of thinking. Uh, when they're talking about those uh, spirits, uh, it's, it's an ani animist uh, religion, so you have uh, spirits uh, everywhere. I wanted to present it as well because it's something that always been uh, very uh, darkened. Uh, from uh, you always present this as something like a diabolic, uh, uh, 
it's a barbarian thing. I come from a very uh, Catholic uh, family. My mother is, uh, is going to church every, I don't know, two or three times a day. Yes. So the those ideas of uh, of uh, voodoo was always something that was a very uh, very dark, and I, I it was a, one of the big revelation I had in AC because when I encountered that uh, these these uh, these that that culture, I noticed that it was rather it was something gathering. It was uh, rather inclusive, and uh, I wanted to to pr to, s to show that because it's it's all, it's all we've been uh, we've been. We've been um, um, uh, brainwashed in another way, and it's not fair. Um, for Jerry, Jerry is lives uh, in Kafufei. This is the area that we went to work with the youth in Kafufei. Actually, it was Lodi August that is in your film that had invited us to c go and do a hip hop workshop there. And uh, my friend uh, Mackenzie Jeune, that we know a long way, he was a filmmaker, was there also to film and to meet the American uh, delegation that came from Washington, from Nomadic Works, uh, with, uh, with us. And Jerry came with uh, Mackenzie Jeune. And then we were just sitting down and talking. And this is when I met him. And I found out he was a graffiti artist. And uh, when we decided to show the Haitian, the artists, the youth, the, the girls, and, uh, and then we said, that's a good idea. And then that's how we come about to do the, the short on Jerry. What is exceptional in uh, when Jerry's work as well is like he, he you don't have to do. You, you don't. Nobody have the right to do that kind of uh, graph uh, in HC. So he has to work very, very fast, and uh, he can do those amazing things in, uh, in less than five minutes. It's uh, it's very skill. I have one question for you. Yeah. Are you planning to to follow a, a character like that in uh, to have a portrait uh, in each of your films? Yes, that's what that's what we have decided to do because we have so many, we have countless of hours of, of film, and um, we have other people that helping us translating, and uh, even people not different nationalities, and that helps a lot with the translation. And um, from my end, we have like three producers on the on the film. We going to focus on the slam. Because one of my discovery, I didn't know about so many young girls doing poetry, like slamming, without music, without nothing. And th there's some amazing, amazing footage and stories with those poetries. And this is what we're going to focus on now. Cool. Just a little parenthesis. In AC, you, you don't only have uh, black people. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a it's a, from the start I'm, I was often saying to the <laughs> to my friends hey the, the white guys were here before you uh, and so there's a there's a there's a, a lots of uh, the, of course there there would have been uh, Caucasian in, in the film easily but uh, Sean, Sean Penn I, I, I met him uh, he was very present all the, the time I was there. Uh, I, I used to work in the log base near the airport, and uh, he was in the cafeteria there every every day. So uh, once I wanted to to do um, a shooting that I had planned in Cité Soleil, and for a certain time it was not the right moment to be in Cité Soleil. So I went to their camp and I asked them if I could. Uh, you you have that scene where the boy is. Uh, it's all it's all. Um, deconstruct and you see a little boy jumping. Uh, uh, I wanted to go there because it, there was a lot of houses that was uh, about to be demolished. And uh, so I, I went uh, to his camp and I, f I met the guy and he was very, uh, very, it, it surprised me because uh, most of their work is at that moment was about cr uh, crushing the rubbles, like making dust and uh, 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 free the, the roads because uh, it's it was the most like uh, everybody goes in AC and take photos with their little kids and handicap and PTs all kind of things 
but him, he was working with trucks and uh, crushing rubbles, nothing very sexy there. And, uh, but very useful because that's the way that things, uh, you, could, uh, you could get the road uh, working. So I was very, we had a long conversation and I was, uh, I was amazed by his, uh, his knowledge about that. He, was, he talked like an engineer. So I understood it was, he was very hands on into, uh, into his work. I would say to first of all to come to the the activity that's going on at uh, on on Thursday and uh, and encourage people to come and have this discussion because I think the mainstream media is not talking about that and it's people like uh, this sort of grassroots and that's doing that and us artists that's sharing the information between us but I feel like most of the uh, population Canadian they're not aware so as much as we can pass the word and um, I think that would be a good idea um, and also I would uh, I would say to to uh, not to not to believe uh, everything that we read in the newspaper <laughs> about AC it's not uh, uh, it's a very rich country uh, of culture and uh, history and uh, uh, it's very enlight enlight enlightful to to uh, to meet uh, me. I was lucky. Uh, I met people in the like in the uh, rural uh, side of uh, IT. I get into books. Uh, I understood that uh, I had built up something for a long time that was not actually what we were what they were presenting is not uh, what was what was not very uh, very. Um, fair for IT. So there's a, I would just invite people to, to read a bit more or to be curious about, uh, not to be blocked, but uh, by all those uh, di diabolic uh, voodoo things and uh, <laughs> try to go further and uh, understand the country. I understand that people, uh, there's a big campaign these days for people to go um, and visit IT more. And they are proposing kind of a and I never travel with a bracelet, like we go in a buffet and stuff like that. But th this is the proposition they found to. Uh, it's a first step. I, I, it's not my kind of trips, but uh, it, it, uh, if people can get closer to that uh, to the country in the right way, I guess. Uh um. oh. Yeah, I'll just um, respond to that quickly. Just saying. Um, I think maybe some of the other questions directed to the Joseph, maybe just missing the point a bit because um, maybe for the crowd at, at Cinema Politica, we are we all kind of are already accepting of other cultures and so on and so forth. But I feel like it's a beautiful film anyway. So even if maybe th on that political level people aren't learning anything, that's that's okay. And one of the things that people could do is just tell their parents or people who might not have a kind of basic understanding of. Haiti as a you know a, ha, as a country having its own culture and its own history to go to the film uh, when it's playing in theaters and tell tell people who would be kind of shocked to see Haitian culture up close to go and and to experience that shock um, and then more uh, you know just further getting involved uh, there's sign up sheets that have been passed around for Haiti Action Montreal uh, if you want to get emails about our events um, you know just put your email down. And uh, we'll be continuing to organize, uh, you know, do more things like bringing Mario Joseph, a Haitian human rights lawyer, which we've done, uh, to Montreal for that. So, uh, yeah. That's it. Yes, it, it has been confirmed by different scientists that the origin of cholera is from the Nepalese uh, force that is in Haiti right now. So there's no doubt about it. It's just that uh, the United Nations decide not to uh, uh, take their own responsibility. And uh, if, you, uh, if you go to the real, real world part of Haiti, there's people that are that still affecting on a daily basis by the cholera. And, uh, and uh, one of the things I hear people are saying 
Um, yes, uh, of course, there's different media that are talking about it, that link the UN about it. But their own government right now is not really making a case in front of the, the UN to denounce what's going on. And uh, for, for me, it's also the same thing. If you have a government, the government w representing you, and they should make a case in front of the, the UN for reparations and uh, make a commitment to stop uh, uh, the, di the, the disease. 8,000 dead, dead people. And they, 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 they prove it very quickly. Of yes, course, like and there's months. more than 500,000 people um, affected by it. And uh, yeah. And uh, one of the things I was thinking while I was watching the, the film, and uh, do you, is there any other languages that if sort of subtitled to, like Spanish, Portuguese? I made the, uh, I did the French version, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Creole version. I, I did a Creole version, but it's uh, it's dubbed. Okay. There's, there's no subtitle. Okay. So I, the first presentation was uh, in Haiti, so I wanted to have something they could, uh, okay. there's a lot of people who can't read, so. And now I have a, a Spanish version because the film is going to Guadalajara in uh, in one yeah. month. Okay. Yeah, because I think uh, one of the the, the things that is very successful with the international community, they always make it seems like it's a Haitian problem, and which is not. It's just not a Haitian problem. It's a it's a, it's a human problem. And uh, if you see, for example, a country like Brazil. And we share so much culturally. If you're looking at the, even the, the the religion part, you look in it's look like the the Colombia in Brazil, and uh, I think that uh, that's a film that would a lot of Brazilians should should see in to see like the the reality that what's going on in Haiti, and it's the Brazilian force that is occupying Haiti right now. And I think there's a lot of people that don't know that. I think on on the ground in their own country. When people understand that, maybe they can talk to the government to say, this is what uh, our army is doing to another country, that the so-called poor, we know Haiti is not poor. H Haiti was impoverished. It's, it's a rich country. OK, well, um, I'd just like you to once again tell us where we can see Democracy in Haiti in the episodes and where we can see IT Thomas. You can see it at democracyinhaiti.com. Okay. And IT Thomas? IT Thomas should be released in one, uh, the 21st of March in uh, French and in English in Montreal. In theaters? Yes. In the Across five. the city. So mm, please spread the word and tell your friends and families and colleagues. Let's give those guys one last round of applause. Thank you. And thank you so much for being here tonight. <laughs>